going to be painting the calipers and uh, the rotor. I guess you want to say like the rotor hat, I guess, and the caliper. Um, I'm going to be using this stuff. This is by uh, VHT, Engine Enamel. It's uh, good up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, it's got a chemical resistant coating, and it's like a drivetrain paint, but it's a high temperature, and it's called Universal Aluminum, and this stuff is pretty cool. I've actually sprayed, uh, <clears throat> it was um, for, just to test it out when I first got it, it, it was my cast iron um, exhaust manifold, and this stuff really lives up to uh, the high temperature it doesn't fade doesn't chip doesn't crack or nothing you could put it straight on a header I mean they do have a 2000 degree paint which would probably you know outlast this but this stuff is pretty cool and I believe it has like some type of like ceramic inside of it to uh, resist um, temperature so I'm gonna uh, jack up the car real quick something temporarily and I'm not going to be under the car, so I'm going to try and do this without my jack stand. And I'm going to uh, shoot these calipers because when I got them, they were pretty crusty. And um, just to brighten it up a little bit. Alright, so I have the car on, <clears throat> I guess you want to say a little scissor jack or a bottle jack. And I have, uh, I lowered it so it's like safely resting on the wheel. If you're doing any type of work where you're going underneath the car, use jack stands. If it's going to be a quick little paint job on the caliper, I find this to be quick enough and uh, I don't have to haul around an 80 pound jack and jack stands. But definitely for anything else that you have to go underneath, use uh, proper safety. As you can see right here, I have uh, <clears throat> an OEM 3 lug. It adds five horsepower, and um, it's pretty cool. Just kidding. Um, this I got this snapped off. I never fixed it because I have to like press out a bearing and press in a new bearing. If there was any type of hazard, it would have happened already. But I'm definitely gonna fix it in the future. So yeah. So um, the only thing I'm gonna do is just uh, take out the brake pads so I don't spray them, and everything else I'm gonna try and mask up. I'm not going to worry about right here, but I'm just going to get around here and the caliper. Something seemed loose, but okay, I guess it's just these. So yeah, so let me uh, take off these pads and see the condition of them first. And um, yeah, I'll get started. Alright, so I finally uh, got it unjammed. It was getting caught with the brake pad, so now everything's ready to go. There's one pad. Yeah, I think it was like this rivet right there. So these pads don't look too bad. They perform pretty good, so... And that's, uh, those are the the Legend GS calipers pretty good upgrade if you're thinking about track time and all that and uh, if you have like a long straightaway Auto X where there's a lot of braking you know where there's no uh, brake fade or nothing these have like very minimal brake fade because of the diameter so alright so now that I got that off I'm gonna do some masking around here you know it's not gonna be a top-notch job I was going to take off the rotor, but I don't want to take off the uh, the bracket because all, all that stuff is uh, torqued down all nicely and I don't want to deal with it right now, so I'm just going to paint this hat on the car. So let's see if I can do that, try and mask it up a little bit. Alright, so before masking, I uh, clean it up pretty good. I use this green pad with some all-purpose cleaner. The more heavy-duty, the better. Get an old um, microfiber. 
I like these because you know it actually picks up the uh, the grime, you know, rather than just spreads it around. It actually cleaned up real nice right here. That's like the the factory color, kind of like that galvanized look. But you know, I kind of want it a little bit more brighter and better looking. So I'm just gonna wait for this to dry and then mask, and then we'll see. All right, so this is how um, how much I'm gonna mask off. This is basically the uh, bleeder valve, rubber, anything rubber seals or whatever. You don't want to get paint on that. Might look a little sloppy. Axle nut and the hub. Um, you don't have to mask off completely everything off of the you know the friction area because whatever gets on there overspray, it's gonna come right off. Um, but just make sure you, you mask off the majority of it. It's what I like doing, but it's alright if you get a little bit on it anyways, so uh, The spindle Mask that off and uh, you might see that the car is not um, You know covered up Whenever you uh, pound on paint you're just going crazy with the can you want to mask off everything but since I'm just gonna slightly just blow some paint on this um, I'm gonna minimize the uh, the cloud, you know, so it's not gonna get all into the wheel well or nothing. And um, I'll try not to get as much overspray. It's not impossible, but you can minimize it by can control. kind of windy too though so it's kind of getting everywhere but I can't really prevent that. Kind of an awkward angle too though that I'm at. I'm not going to worry about inside here because the wheel is going to go over that anyways. Alright, that looks pretty good. Oh, and by the way, I took off these uh, little clips that hold in the uh, brake pads just so I don't spray them. I kind of got over spray up in here. I want to paint that. I think I'm going to do that. Or at least try attempt it kind of got tape all over it but we'll see
Alright, so that's about it. Alright, so that's for sure it. So, I'm gonna uh, wait till it uh, dries off a little bit, take off the masking, and um, put the wheel back on. Alright, you wanna see some incredibly bad, bad luck? Caliper looks good, rotor looks good. Not bad at all, right? You want to see the incredible bad luck, but luckily I uh, limped it home. Yep. Snapped it fresh. Old, new. These two are the only ones holding it on. So now I have uh, two options. Uh, ex install my extended studs. Or I can go to the junkyard and find a DC and just buy the whole hub for about 25 or 30 dollars. So I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do, but it definitely looks uh, pretty badass painted. And uh, remember, uh, you know, you don't have to get super into detail with this stuff because nobody's gonna be scoping out your car that close to be uh, looking for flaws. But um, but if you do put in the detail and put in the effort it'll definitely look better up close but it's really not needed so if you like this video please like subscribe and comment um, I'm probably gonna end up just getting another spindle for this with um, four studs so I could be uh, non OEM two lug so yeah so um, <clears throat> that's about it and uh, yeah catch you on the next one Alright, what's up guys? This is uh, another junkyard video. Right here, just post it. The tools. Um, I'm here for the spindle. It's Memorial Day Monday, and you guys would not believe the parking lot is usually um, empty. And it could, it could hold around 300 cars. It's completely packed. People are double parking. It is packed here, so. Hopefully I have my part and uh, we'll see if we can get it. All right, so I'm looking for the spindle. I see this DB7, it's an automatic car. Pretty sweet looking ride. And uh, when I go to the spindle, I see that it's been clipped and uh, I don't really want this on my car because it's it was uh, you know it could be some type of uh, it could be tweaked in a way so I gotta find another Acura here hopefully they have one I just got here look at my little cart that's thug life that thing's like knee-high but yeah so I cannot use this one because the bearing might be uh, messed up the spindle might be bent so I'm gonna keep it pushing to the next one. Let's see what I find. So here's this other uh, Integra right here. And once I go up to it, I just see uh, beer, there's light, 12 pack. And I seen these uh, floor mats, but apparently the sedans are different than the coupes. That's definitely a different shape. But look at these door panels for a sedan. That's pretty nice. They took the front ones, pretty obvious. Those things are never here. Little visor. 
a lot of cool little uh, parts for this sedan right here. Whoever needs a uh, black interior swap. Little uh, Ricer Miata right here. H&R. But this one was uh, punched. And I'm not going to get this one either. Because you can see right here. I don't know if you can see, but right there. Do you see that crustiness right there? Well, that means that that lower arm is bent. Which means the spindle got uh, got some pretty good stress in it. So I'm not going to be picking up this one either. Even though this would have been a perfect candidate, if it was hit and there's some type of stress on the suspension. And it's pinned too. That's pinned. So... Off to the next one. Little death traps. I don't know if the person was uh, okay, walked away, but this kind of looks like a, a fatal collision to me. Cam gear got dinked. Yeah, like, I've actually seen cars with blood all inside and there was like hazard and everything. Like hazard signs. I don't see anything right here, but this is pretty crazy shit though. Hopefully this person walked away. Look what I spotted. Look what I spotted right here. Mitsubishi Mirage. Mighty car mods right here. It doesn't have a stench of death in it. So this is a pretty good candidate for the Mighty Car Mods. Pretty hilarious. And look at this uh, SE300. Oh no, it's a 400 V8 4.0. Pretty cool. Those are pretty nice. Beautiful Integra. It has uh, wheel locks. I can take those off. They're the same as mine. The 18B. Pretty nice. Yeah, that, that was a reshot. Pretty sick though. I like it. This thing this thing was pretty nice at one time. Look at that, look how typical that is. Happened to me a couple times. Older style mirror. No, oh, and plus it's a sedan, so it wouldn't even fit besides this. Little Honda Del Sol right here. They took the seats. Pretty clean at once. Used to be, but clean color. These are definitely getting more rare. So here's another Acura Integra sedan, kind of like a sand color. Found my part. The studs actually look a little new. Yeah, they're definitely not the original. They're usually more crustier than this. For this type of car that's dirty, those look pretty good. Automatic, should be good. But the only thing that worries me about this is taking off the axle nut, especially if there's no uh, strut inside. It could get a little bit weird, so because when I'm trying to apply force, everything wants to flex instead of having the strut make everything stationary. But I'm definitely gonna try and pull this. And I'm gonna pull this possibly too. That's original too, so I'll see. Oh, I actually need this hardware too for these. All right, so I'm gonna try to pull, pull this off already. Have, uh... Road, um, screwdriver stuck in the rotor and jamming it up 
and that's how I got Alright, what's up guys? So, uh, I'm changing the spindle. I ended up getting it. Got the car jacked up. Got to take off the wheel. Um, I know like a lot of people are going to say, why not just uh, put the extended lug nuts on there? Well, the reason why it's because it's the downtime. I can't really uh, have this car not working. And um, I'll have to take it to over there and then they'll have to press out the bearing because I don't really know how to do that. And so, like, I just want somebody who's uh, professional at pressing out bearings to do it. And the cost, too. So, if, if I do the extended lug nuts on this side, I will have to do it on that side. So, that's double the cost. I got the whole spindle with two, with four nice uh, lugs and a nice bearing and ball joint for a little bit over $20. So, and plus it's Memorial Day and it's a sell. So, uh, that's just my only best option for now. But I will definitely press in some nice uh, extended studs. I already have them and new bearings. I kind of want to put new bearings because these are known for going out. But um, that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna end up doing in the future. But for now, this is like the best cost-effective way. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, do this. Set it up on a tripod and uh, hopefully I can bust this out within an hour. Oh, and I also got this boot too. Yeah, that one's busted, but I'm gonna do that some other day. But my goal is uh, one hour for this, so let's see if I can do it. So this is the hub right here. Got a tight bearing. I also got the bellows boot for the uh, rack. The other one, it seemed like a different manufacturer, so I ended up just uh, uh, just getting one, and then I'm gonna replace one one day, and then one, one the other day, because I always take off the wheels to inspect and tinker around. And I know you can get these for $19.99 at AutoZone, but I got this for a couple dollars, so and it's still pretty good shape. So just why not for a couple bucks? Yeah, so it's crusty, but she'll do. And it's got all four. And I'm finally getting around to it, so I had to wait until one broke to fix it finally. So, so yeah, so now to take that off and get my fresh brakes all... Um, greasy but I gotta do what I gotta do all right so at further inspection you can see right here on this side where it's a little bit rusted like there was actually a crack in between here for a while and then where it completely snapped is like fresh metal that one was uh, painted over but yeah, but you can tell that there's rust and corrosion right there, so that's pretty crazy. So this thing was actually um, breaking loose way before. So, damn, that's pretty crazy. It's a good thing it didn't come off while it was driving or down the going down the highway. But yeah, so I gotta get the rest of it off. I hate ball joints, but you know you have to deal with it, so. Let me get the rest of this off. Alright, so I got the fresh one on. All I have to do is uh, button up the bottom ball joint, put the cotter pin back in, ABS line, ABS uh, sensor, put the, car, put the uh, caliper back in and tighten up this bolt when it's on the ground. Whenever you use the big uh, rotors, the only modification you have to do to your original parts is bend this piece over so you just draw a line right there I don't have anything bigger than these uh, needle nose and literally just fold it fold it completely over like that and so now the bigger caliper could uh, clear that instead of just cutting or making it nice you could just uh, fold it over like that so that's the only modification you have to make to your spindle to make the bigger calipers uh, work oh, and it's always good practice to clean this ABS sensor because it picks up uh, iron bits and little pieces of steel 
off the you know the ground and you know all the road debris and if you clean this you could uh, prevent possibly a check engine light because something will ground out or short out or something and it wouldn't register and the ECU will read this all right so old spindle off new spindle on four lug all I have to do is uh, torque down the uh, wheel the axle nut I think it's about 100 to 120 pounds because you got you got to put preload but yeah so um, when I was painting the brakes I wasn't using a jack stand with a proper jack I put the wheel underneath the side skirt and I use a scissor jack I don't recommend that that's something I do but I think uh, no one should do that and if you do do it do it at your own risk I think it's fine if you do it for a car that sits so low because since this wheel is only six inches wide technically the wheel the car is only six inches off the ground but obviously you don't want to try anything like that with like a, um, a truck or something or you know something that is not unit body and that is uh, you know pretty high off the ground but yeah but remember safety first and uh, always uh, be safe than sorry so but yeah so that's gonna conclude this video and uh, I'm gonna chop it here before uh, it gets too long but yeah so I'll uh, catch you on the next one